Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, hopping into good health, how these marsupials are making their way to a long, healthy life. And it's inevitable, aging. When it comes to our four-legged friend, there are things you can do to make the golden years good years. We get some tips from the Suncoast Vet. Plus, you never know what you may find if you just look up. We're walking along with the Audubon, appreciating nature at its finest. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. Most of us know what it's like to have aches and pains, especially as we grow older. But for your pet, it's not something they can vocalize. So sometimes it's a guessing game for us humans to figure out what may be ailing our animals. At Trilogy Chiropractic in Bradenton, Florida, they specialize in an alternative approach to relieving pain and continuing wellness at any age and they also do it for your pet. Yes, cats and dogs are often found in the treatment rooms, getting alignments that can help things like their nervous system. It's supplemental care, not meant to replace your traditional vet. But what caught our attention this time was the latest clientele. We were intrigued, and we wondered what in the world can a chiropractor do for a kangaroo? So let's take a look. Awesome. Look at that nice tail. Dundee actually is one of our uh, ambassadors. He came from uh, the largest uh, conservation um, place in Dade City who gives to people um, uh, that use them for educational purposes. And then how old is he now? So he's 11 months now. 11 months so, now. But he'll, be, he'll be in the pouch. Yeah, he'll be on a bottle and in the pouch until uh, about 15 months. Okay, gotcha. So, and I know you wanted to get him checked out for overall just nervous mm -hmm. system wellness today, but has yep. anything happened, any bumps or bruises, any falls, anything you know what? crazy over the past couple months? Actually, uh, you know, he um, was hopping around outside and um, he acted like his hips were a little bit off. Okay. Um, he's acting like he's a little bit more stable, but maybe kind of check that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we kind of watch him hop in here a little bit, but probably what we'll do is a full gait analysis where we just okay. kind of watch him in the hallway there. Yep. And we'll see how he moves. A lot of times, especially with kangaroos, they're going to use their tail to carry their right. entire body weight when they walk too. Right. And even as adults, they carry, what is it, up to 150 to 200 pounds on their tail. So very strong. And we'll watch kind of the way that interacts with his right. head then too right. and kind of see how he yeah. all moves there just too. Just make sure he's just kind of on center. Look at that. It's a really good gate in the back end. He's just going for a stroll, huh? Good. Okay, let's bring him back over this way. Ready, Dundee? We'll go back. Well, we, all, we say this with a lot of our people, patients as well, but the developmental stages, especially early on in life, you gotta make mm -hmm. sure that the brain can communicate with the rest of the body. Right. So this is a great time to get them checked. It doesn't yeah. mean we're gonna be you know, adjusting every single thing right. in the whole spine, but what it does mean is we can optimize the overall right. developmental stages yeah. and the health of the joints, but also the nervous system there. Well, and clearly you're feeling that there's a, you know, with something a little there, tight so. back there, right at the base of the tail where the tail connects to the pelvis there. Mm -hmm. He's looking out the window. He's like, oh. We have visited with you before. We have. And we saw a cat and we saw a dog and everything, but now yeah. a kangaroo? Really? We, we keep it fun. We keep <laughs> it fun. Yeah, yeah. It'll keep me from ever getting bored. Oh, I would job. say That's so. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A kangaroo, what can you do for them? 
You know, when it comes to animals in general, the best way to explain what chiropractic care can do is to relate it back to the functions of the body. Aches and pains are classically what people think of in chiropractic care in general. Um, you know, in dogs, it's a lot of hip dysplasia, arthritis, things like that that are classically achy and painful, similar to people, right? But when it comes to something like a kangaroo or any animal that can't really talk to us like our people can, the best way to understand is the internal functions. So things like digestion, eyes, ears, nose, throat. We often see like dogs with a lot of, um, a lot of ear infections, things like that as well. When you help the body function better, then you can overall live a healthier lifestyle as well. So that's how we relate it back to our animals. In a kangaroo in general, um, what you're gonna see throughout the video here is that the kangaroos have different weight distributions throughout their spine. So certain parts of their spine are gonna take more wear and tear than and other animals like people more upright kangaroos kangaroos are slightly lean forward like that and then a dog's on all fours right so very different anatomy as well okay let me adjust i'm going to go ahead and adjust all the way down where the base of his tail is connected to his pelvis here and that would take his whole tail too. yep and that's what we're going to do right after okay, let's get that set you ready you have a good stable okay ready one two three Nice yeah. job, Dundee. Very oh, good, buddy. Very good. Nice. Very good. Okay, I'm going to scoop his tail out. Yep. Okay? I know, buddy. Let's check the tail. I know you're using it. I say that's a big muscle too, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, so in kangaroos, they have anywhere between 15 to 20 vertebrae in the tail. Okay. And they're fully formed, so especially Very when they're cool. that weight bearing, like we talked Ooh, about yeah. up to 150 to 200 pounds, their musculature is insane. They're so strong and in their tail. Just how fast he is is insane. Like, so if he's putting weight, say right about there, how it kind of bends in, mm -hmm. he's a little stuck. It's mainly on that right okay. side. I'm going to do a very gentle adjustment. It doesn't need much. Perfect. Ready, buddy? Nice oh job. One more, buddy, right? That's so cool. I love that oh, he's just wow. holding still. Like, I know it. <laughs> he's so good. He's that like, good. so good. <laughs> he's like back to cleaning myself. You've also looked at a couple of the sheep that she's brought in. Yeah, yeah. And they're deaf and they can't see. No, yeah. So what are you really trying to correct there? The best thing we can do is optimize the body's functions. And that's kind of what I was referring to earlier. When we remove interference in the nervous system, I like to use the analogy, it's like a kink in the hose. So if you have water flowing through the hose, basically the brain signal to the rest of the body, that's the water. And then if that signal gets interrupted or there's a kink in the hose itself, what we do is we go into the spine and we're taking a look which joints are moving, which joints are not, how it's misaligned in which direction, and then we go ahead and we fix that joint, which then releases that kink, allows the water, or in our analogy, the brain signal sending to the rest of the body, allows it to flow properly, and that's what gives optimal function. You've done a lot of training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're Dr. Absolutely. Paul. <laughs> Did you ever think that you would work on something other than a human? You know, very early on in our school, so Dr. Brianna, my lovely wife, she was wanting to be a veterinarian in our undergrad degree. And then when we started chiropractic school, she's like, listen, I'll join chiropractic school for sure because she loved what it was all about. She said, just promise me we'll work on animals. And I was like, done, of course, of <laughs> course we can do that. So we decided to integrate it directly into our office. So about two thirds of our office is for people and then one third is completely separate for animals. It's kind of like running two offices in one, which as a business owner is a whole different story. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun nonetheless. And so as we started to explore that, we have like our, our bucket list animals that we can help like a giraffe. If anybody knows a giraffe, please let me know. Um, yeah, but for real, when you start to explore these different animals, it's really just a passion that you can latch on to and just get amazing results for these animals that otherwise would never get to experience chiropractic care. So you feel very secure in what you're doing with Absolutely. these animals. Absolutely. Yeah, we do, we do a lot of work ahead of time. So I know what you probably see is the end result of our research and understanding the anatomy. The education programs we go through teach us here's canine anatomy and physiology, and then here's equine or horse, so dogs and horses. They're gonna teach you everything about those two animals, but they also prepare us for everything we need to know about other animals we might uh, run into, like a kangaroo, yeah. right? We have to go and we have to study the anatomy, the physiology, understanding the different body functions, what separates them, what makes them unique. That's really what we have to do in the back end. So this was us last night looking at textbooks and online articles, <laughs> right? Making sure we understand everything we need to know over the past week or so. 
But then when they come into the office here, we're able to give them the best care that they can get to optimize that function. The pressure we're using is very similar to the pressure you would use to like check if a tomato is ripe. Yeah. So they don't need a, a massive wham bam adjustment. Super gentle does yeah. the trick there too. Yeah. Okay, well I definitely want to watch him walk again. Yeah. Um, let's see how he's moving here. We'll really look at the back end. After doing the wellness check, we expect a couple different changes in general. One might be that he just zonks out super tired, much like he's what passed he's out right, right now, now right, <laughs> right where he's comfortable. So continue to keep an eye on that. The other thing that can happen is if he gets a ton of energy, he's feeling really good, okay. once you just to monitor that. You don't need okay. to limit him or you don't need to corral him or anything like that. Just let him do what's okay. normal for him, but keep okay. an eye on him too. Yeah. In general, he was doing really well. The biggest one in that upper lumbar area that really sunk down in there, okay. that actually goes to the adrenal glands as well so sometimes you can see internal chemistry changes things oh. like digestion energy sleep things like oh, that are great okay. to keep an eye on as awesome. well okay very cool all right but he did so, great today i'm glad asleep. you brought him in yeah he's already out <laughs> yep in general especially in the state of florida you're not going to find um as many animal chiropractors out there that are able and understanding and able to just get their hands on and help out these animals so we love to be that outlet in general but the way animals react is absolutely amazing. For more on the types of care Trilogy offers, you can go to their website at trilogy-chiropractic.com. Coming up next on Animal Outtakes, we speak with one of our resident veterinarians here at Dante's Den about some of the things you can be doing as your pet ages. That's next. Every dolphin at Clearwater Marine Aquarium has an amazing tale. They're all rescues who have overcome challenges to survive and thrive. You'll be inspired by every animal story and unforgettable moments with them, including two-year-old Apollo, our newest rescue dolphin. There's something inspirational for every kid and kid at heart. Your visit directly supports the animal care and rescue efforts at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, celebrating 50 years of amazing tales. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Your breakfast is served. Ah, time for another day in doggy paradise. I sure am one lucky pup. Mr. Benson, would you like to go out for your morning stroll? The weather is quite lovely today. That sounds wonderful. Don't mind if I do. After all that exercise, I think I'd like to lounge by the pool and maybe dip my paws in. As you wish, sir. Right this way. Ah, what a perfect day. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else but Dante's Den while Mom and Dad are away. At Dante's Den, we pride ourselves in providing the best experience for your beloved pup. Whether it be a day, a month, or a year, Dante's Den should always be at the top of your list for boarding. With an expansive campus, your dog will enjoy daily walks, pool time, and an endless supply of love. Even better, it's all under 24-7 supervision from our wonderful staff. If you're anything like us, your dog's safety and happiness come first. To learn more about Dante's Den, visit dantesden.org. I'm here today with Dr. Alta, who is one of the veterinarians at Dante's Den Clinic. And she has a senior dog. I'll bet you can't tell, because we couldn't. At what point, Dr. Alta, would you define a senior dog? So a senior dog is going to kind of depend on the individual and their breed and size, but in general we'd say 8 plus um, is going to be a senior dog. Um, but some breeds, or if they've had other health ailments, may be determined a senior dog younger than that. Well, we have a senior citizen here, a Basenji. Yes. Now, average lifespan? Probably in their early teens. I'd probably say around 14 is about average, and okay. he is currently 15. And so would you say that he turned senior? Um, I would probably say for him, he probably starts showing signs more around 12. Um, he has had some chronic illnesses, but probably when we started seeing other signs that can be suggestive of a senior dog, like slowing down, mobility changes, changes in their weight, um, I would say that started around 12 years of age for him. Now, those of us who have bigger dogs yes. than Ramsey, uh, what are we talking about there? For example, the Akitas, the German Shepherds, the Great Danes. So those guys could vary between five to seven years um, as a senior dog. Um, one, depending on their health issues um, and what they're prone to, as well as their lifestyle changes. Now, 
we all think that our puppies are going to live forever and we pray for that, but it doesn't always work out that way. Yes. So what are some of the things that we should be looking for? So when they get to those ages, we definitely recommend that they should be seen annually and sometimes potentially biannually um, for exams to get a full wellness checkup. Um, definitely around that time, I also want to start doing routine yearly blood work. Um, and if we can catch some early markers early on, it'll hopefully give us more time with them so that we can have them as long as long as we can. Um, and then the other signs that we're going to look for that would tell us if we should get them in is like changes in their mobility and changes in their weight, whether that's weight gain or weight loss. Now, speaking of that, um, we know that through the life of a dog, we change the food. We have the puppy yes. food, we have the adult food and so on. When would you recommend that we switch the food to a senior formula? Yeah, so again, that's going to depend a little bit on their ages and how um, their bodies are changing and things like that. If we are seeing some like early signs in blood work, um, those may also be suggestive of switching to senior foods. A lot of senior foods are going to be a little bit more restricted in protein, um, which our older patients can be at risk for like kidney disease. So again, that's where blood work can come in of do we, can we just get them on a senior diet versus do they need to be on prescription foods? Um, also, a lot of senior foods are gonna have um, joint supplements and things to help with their mobility as we're gonna see them start getting where they're a little bit slower, trouble getting up as they age. Now, vaccinations. We certainly know rabies has to continue. Yeah. But what about some of the others? So um, in regards to vaccines, as the animal gets older, I always like to have a conversation with the owners and kind of reassess the animal's lifestyle. Um, you know, if they're no longer being as active, they're not going to daycare or boarding just because they're slowing down, um, then sometimes vaccines like Bordetella and stuff, we may not um, continue. Um, distemper parvo, as they get older, a lot of us vets will also um, discontinue. Um, but that kind of depends on the vet and where you live. We here at Dante's Den, we have had dogs since almost the first day that we opened. And so we have an aging population yeah. here. And um, we, we just kind of watch them and we hope and pray that they're gonna make it another year and so on. But what should we really be looking for? We understand they're gonna slow down a bit. Yeah. Uh, some of them were great swimmers in our pool and now they just kind of walk around it, but is there a telltale sign that we can look for? Yeah, so um, a lot of times the things I'm gonna see is them slowing down where they're not wanting to go for as long of a walk or they're stopping more. Um, one thing that I think people don't always notice too is like if they're just having a slow time from a laying position to standing up, that too can also be signs of like early arthritis and things like that. Um, unfortunately, fortunately in this day and age, we actually have a lot of either medications or alternative medicines and things that we can do to help our patients with early signs of mobility changes to either kind of slow the progression of arthritis or at least give our patients some comfort in the meantime. Um, in fact, that they might get back to where they're running around or playing in the pool. It might not be as much as they were before, but they still might get some of those um, enjoyments out of it um, if we are proactive and, and have early intervention. And how do you feel about, how about a massage? Yeah, so I think there are so many modalities out there. I always tell clients that we have to find what works best for the individual. Um, for some individuals, medications might be easier, but then for other individuals, laser therapy or acupuncture um, or physical therapy, massage, those things might work better for that patient. Um, so it's kind of a uh, trial and error. <laughs> Bless you, bud. Um, sometimes it's a trial and error and sometimes you need multimodals. So you might need medications with your acupuncture or your laser therapy, um, but we wanna always cater to the individual and not as a general mass. And so with that, we thank you so much, Dr. Alta, and you know, you're a lucky puppy, <laughs> yeah, because this is her dog, so she's watching him every day. Yes. At Dante's Den Foundation here in Mayaka, 
we take in dogs from all walks of life and many times their stories are not pleasant. And we do our best to give them the best life and that means guaranteeing comfort, freedom and dignity. Often the older dogs are unable to be adopted because of health conditions that require a lot of time and money. So we make it our mission to make this their forever home. And in turn, we humans here at Dante's are forever changed by the love we receive in return from dogs like Benson and Bella. Our Benson, a Newfoundland, has been at Dante's Den for approximately 10 years. Right now he's about 12 years of age, which is quite old for a Newfie, but he's just hanging in because he loves us and we love him beyond compare. He's got arthritis, he has some eye problems, and of course a few ear problems. But we address each and every one of them, especially the arthritis. We do give him supplemental injections every week and it keeps him going and he still runs around the pool. Doesn't do as much swimming as he used to, but he does put his little paw in and test the water. Bella has been with us for about nine years and she just is the most wonderful love you could ever want. But unfortunately, everybody passed her by and she was up for adoption for quite a long time. But then there comes a point where you say, nope, she needs to stay with us. And so she became a lifetime care dog with us and we just love her. She just cuddles with us and plays with us, but she is aging. We've noticed that she's slowed down just a little bit. So we give her some supplements. We try to exercise Bella each and every day. And it is so important for their mental health. Bella and Benson and the other senior dogs that we have here look forward to our work with them. Why? Because we're one-on-one -on -one with them. We're cuddling them, we're holding them, we're talking to them. They're not forgotten here at Dante's. They are first-class citizens. For more on Dante's and the programs here, you can go to dantesden.org. Stick around. There's much more animal outtakes coming up next. Welcome back. And now we're checking out the locals searching the skies for Florida's fabulous feathered friends. It's a program sponsored by the Manatee Audubon Society along with Manatee County. To see the birds and you can watch them interacting, feeding, it's just a whole different experience. We started out at eight o'clock here at Emerson and this field trip is open to Audubon members and friends and just visitors to Manatee County during the winter time. And um, we saw 40 species of birds. Low tide brought in a lot of the shorebirds. And uh, we just had a really nice walk. We do it for citizen science to see if the numbers are in increasing or decreasing and why. We enjoy getting out in the outdoors. We enjoy the birds and we enjoy the companionship of our birding friends. We've just had a bird ID class in Manatee Audubon. So when you see a great blue heron, you can ID it. You can see the students just really enjoy, hey, I know that, I learned that bird in, in class. And then you can come out to the beach on your own and you'll see these birds and you can ID them. During the winter time in Florida, we have a lot of our visiting shorebirds. Um, we're all looking forward to migration, which will happen this April and, and during the spring as the birds migrate. Uh, north to their breeding grounds. We saw a lot of shorebirds. Uh, we had a lot of feeding, red-breasted mergansers, pelicans, terns. Um, then we went out to the uh, north boardwalk and saw the American white pelicans, brown pelicans, and more mergansers. It's very peaceful, very peaceful. And we'll be right back. 
Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. We hope you have fun and learn a thing or two along the way. And we'll be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. Until then, thanks for watching. Oh,